Hi, welcome to the 14 day weather forecast. At the time of recording for just four days left in the meteorological summer, it really has flown by. Now, my perception is that it hasn't been a bad season on the whole because it was mixed to begin with, quite cool to start off, for wet periods as well for a time, but since the middle part of July, the trend has been towards much drier and often warmer conditions. That said, I live in the southeast of England and I expect those of you in the north and the west will have very different perceptions, but feel free to let me know in the comments section below. Now, coming back to the short to medium term, how are things looking as we head into September? Is there an autumnal flavour to the weather or not? Well, I'll start with the view across Europe and the North Atlantic. The animation runs from 18 GMT, Tuesday the 27th. At the outset, there are some heavy outbreaks of rain over Northern England, extending down into Wales. Elsewhere, it is mostly dry. As I run the sequence, those outbreaks of rain fade away. It stays quite changeable in the north and the west for a time, further showers along the spells of rain, but then high pressure builds up from the south and it becomes the dominant feature of the weather as we head into the weekend. But a potential fly in the ointment as always really. Looking down to the south over France for some heavy outbreaks of rain. They are perilously close to southern Britain, so if you've got weekend plans, keep an eye on the short range forecast because it's very much a case of will they or won't they have an impact. According to this model, they don't really. In the days which follow, though pressure begins to fall and a more changeable pattern returns, there are some outbreaks of rain in the northwest, also some heavy showers there in central and eastern parts of England by next Wednesday. But a lot of uncertainty, it's a messy picture to finish up with here. The upper air temperature and jet stream sequence, using data from the same model run to begin with, the UK is just here, jet streams are mottled shaded area, the greens indicate cooler air, the yellows and oranges warmer air. As I run it, what we see is the jet starts to migrate northwards as high pressure builds, so it turns warmer and drier for a time, but then at the end, as I've already hinted, it's quite a messy setup, the low pressure there just to the north, the jet diving southwards here, and then heading northwards again somewhere close to the UK, but don't take this at face value, it's just given an indication really of how things may develop towards the end of the first week. A few charts for the conditions that we can expect if all that is correct. This is for Wednesday. It's very warm there in the southeast, 27, 28 Celsius, perhaps in the London area. Cooler and wetter as you head northwards and westwards. Some heavy showers there in Scotland, northwestern England, and perhaps northern Wales. Forwards to Friday, and by this point, the high pressure has become the dominating feature of UK's weather. Cooler air has returned to an extent, so temperatures are a little bit lower there in the southeast than they were to start off with. 24 though, still pleasantly warm. 17, 16 is there in Scotland and Northern Ireland. And GFS has a tendency to under forecast maximums a little bit, so I think quite pleasant on the whole. Saturday, it's a similar story. And then according to this, on Monday, not a great deal changes. It's staying dry through this period. But here's a chart from the European model. It's valid on at 06 GMT on Monday, and I'm just using it really to highlight that uncertainty because it's got some heavy rain there pushing into the south, East Anglia and southeastern England too. That could arrive a little bit earlier, a little bit later. It could go a bit further north or a bit further south. It's up in the air to an extent, so as I say, keep up to date with those short range forecasts if you live in southern and central areas particularly as we head through Saturday and into Sunday. The aggregate rainfall charts from the GFS and ECM models really encapsulate that uncertainty uh, beyond the first five days because initially it's dry in central and eastern England, the rain really fair in the northwest. Both of these have the, a very similar rainfall distribution. But if I move forwards to the 0 to 10 day charts, the totals in the northwest have increased a little bit, but not massively. 
it's really in central and eastern areas where there's a lot of uncertainty. Will that rain, which is shown quite clearly over northern France, you can see on the GFS chart on the right there, some high rain totals in northern France and the low countries. They don't really make it to the southeast, according to the GFS, though ECM shows significant amounts of rain in the London area there, some downpours bringing that about. And I think it's the message here is that rain over northern France is perilously close. It could well have an impact on the UK as well. It may reach the south. Now, in more general terms, had the deterministic models compare as we head towards the end of the first week? Here is the GFS, which the animations were based on. High pressure to the southwest and to the east. The UK under a fairly slack setup. Let's say quite a messy picture. Probably a lot of dry weather around, but a risk of showers and long spells of rain in the northwest. The Canadian model has a high pressure a little bit further eastwards, so mostly dry. The uh, German icon. The same sort of setup is starting to look a little bit flabby and messy with a high pressure further to the west. Risk of rain there, showers as well. Difficult to say exactly how it would all play out. The European model, high pressure extending a little bit further eastwards. And finally, the UK Met Office global, high pressure further west. Areas of low pressure here to the southwest, high pressure as well centered to the northeast. But the risk of showers or longer spells of rain drifting around. Very, very difficult to pin down where it would be raining and where it would be staying dry. So I think taking it all together, the first few days of the first week, we see high pressure starting to build. It turns more settled. That continues to be the case into the weekend, but the risk of rain then increases in the south and towards the end of the first week, a more changeable pattern returns. But just how much rain there will be is open to debate. Now, what happens as we go through week two? As ever at this range, it's just about the trends and the probabilities, focusing on the ensemble data to try and identify them. Here's the 16-day GEFS plot for London. Upper air temperatures on the top half of it. Most of those runs are staying above a thick black line, which is a 30-year average, the mean, which is averaging out all the individual runs is above that is above that thick black line. It's quite significantly for much of a period now. There is a big spread though developing. You see some runs there bringing in very warm air and a number going for cooler conditions. In fact, the thick green line, green line there is the GFS operational run. So uh, quite a lot of uncertainty really about how things are going to play out in terms of air mass temperatures over the UK through the second week, at least in the south. In terms of rainfall, well, not that many spikes here. There are some though, and a few of those are very big indeed. So a chance, I think, of thundery conditions. It's a fairly low chance, but not negligible. And I think probably not, comp even if we don't get thundery conditions, there could be some showery rain at times. Two meter temperatures for London. The data tables here showing maximums and minimums, probably close to or above the average, being favored on most days and the chance of some very warm days there in the mix. 26 to 30 Celsius is what's been highlighted by these reds, but the chance of that on any one given day is relatively low, but over the week as a whole, more significant, but we will see some warm air making its way into the south. Overnight lows, very little green there. Most of these runs keeping values in double figures. Up to Manchester, the pattern across the top here, very, very similar, a big, big spread there developing. In terms of rainfall across the bottom, a little bit higher the risk than it was on the London chart for a few more spikes there. All in all though, it's very consistent. The two metre temperature data tables for Manchester, Values a little bit lower than on the London one, ones. Overnight lows as well, quite a bit of green starting to show up. Those are minimums of between six and 10. So cooler nights, cooler days, but reasonably consistent there with the London plot. Up to Glasgow, upper air temperatures really above the average. It's a very, very similar story here. There's the big spread showing up again. 
and even the rainfall risk is not that dissimilar through the second week. So quite difficult really pinning down the details from these. The two meter temperatures for Glasgow, a lot more green there on the overnight lows, so cooler. A few runs going down to between one and five Celsius for days, mainly the orange shading there between 16 and 20, so not too bad considering that we're now heading into September. Rainfall in more general terms through week two. The charts here are generated using the ECM Ensemble and they show the percentage chance of five millimeters or more of rain falling on the first three days of the second week. The greatest risk there in the west of Scotland, ha as has usually been the case this summer, at least for second half of it, not a very high chance in other parts of the UK. So probably a lot of dry weather around, at least if it does rain, the amounts of rain will not be great. The same story really through the following three days. The blue shading there, light blue shading, suggests between a 0 and 30% chance of rain exceeding or reaching five millimeters on any given day. So a lot of dry weather around if these are correct. The mean surface level pressure data table for York heading through the second week has quite a lot of orange shading in the comms air. The amount of it increases significantly through the first few days so it would suggest pressure is building because those runs going for between 1026 and 1040 millibars. So if you just jump back to think about what I was talking about towards the end of the week one quite a mixed and changeable pattern returning according to those deterministic model runs. It ties in quite well with the ensemble data because this is really the end of week one here and there's a lot more yellow there, less of the orange shading that's dipping before it increases again through the middle part of the second week. So perhaps, as I've been saying, a more changeable interlude towards the end of the first week before high pressure returns. And the postage stamp plots show quite a wide range of possible outcomes. On the left, maximum temperatures for Friday the 6th of September. On the right, it's rain. Just one day of course, but I think these are fairly representative of most of the days through week two. What they suggest is that rather warm and dry conditions are favoured for much of the time, but there's a chance of heavy rain developing on some days. Also a possibility of very warm or hot conditions in the south. You can see there a number of the individual stamps have orange and red shading over southern Britain which indicate temperatures of between 25 and 30 Celsius but they are in a minority and the reason why they are is probably explained to an extent by this. It's the mean surface level pressure uh, chart generated from the ECM ensemble also valued for Friday the 6th of September. High pressure is centered to the west of the UK. So winds are coming round it in a clockwise direction down over the UK. It's not an ideal position for hot conditions to develop. Probably quite settled, especially in the west, but with a high pressure centered there, temperatures close to or a little bit above the average perhaps, and maybe a little bit closer to it or even below it in the north and the east. But as I say, it's not favorable for a prolonged period of hot weather. So to summarize, week one, it's a mixed start with showers or long spells of rain in the north, but the mostly settled conditions in the south extend northwards over much of the UK. But there is a risk of rain towards the end of the week, so from Sunday onwards, a more changeable pattern begins to return. There is a possibility of rain pushing up from continental Europe into southern Britain, and then later on from the Atlantic into the west and the northwest. But stay up to date with the short range forecasts because of that level of uncertainty. Week two, 
dry periods are favoured, that's what most of the computer model data is indicating, but for a chance of heavy showers or longer spells of rain it's certainly not out of a question. Temperatures perhaps close to or slightly above the average and still a chance of hot spells developing in the south, but on the whole hot conditions are not really being signalled. So there we have it, into the start of the meteorological autumn, probably a lot of dry weather around, that more changeable period towards the end of the first week, continuing into the start of the second before high pressure then returns. Temperatures, well, I think for many people probably quite pleasant. We are moving into September, so the days are rapidly shortening, but still feeling quite warm in the sunshine, although as I've said, hot conditions are not favoured, at least according to the computer model data available when I was recording this video. Anyway, thanks very much for watching. As ever, if you enjoyed it and found it useful, please consider hitting the like button below and of course, subscribing to the channel if you've not done so already. And do stay up to date with the day-to-day -day weather developments by checking out the weatheroutlook.com website. Thanks very much now. Bye.